All right, ladies and gents, as I mentioned, uh, uh, your quizzes are going to be at home, online. Uh, you will receive first uh, uh, a prerequisite for the quiz that you have to first click on it. It's going to come up in the next couple of days. You click on it, you agree. As soon as you agree, everything else is going to appear because that's a prerequisite for the quizzes. You have to read it carefully. There's a video you watch. It explains to you how the quizzes are done so you know what happens. Um, and as soon as we go back uh, on track, then we're going to do it again in the workshops here. Okay? Uh, so that's that. Uh, any questions about uh, foolproof uh, data entry, C-ins, uh, um, C-out formatting? Questions? Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with what we have uh, uh, ended the class last time. Um, go through uh, operator behaviors, and then after that, we're going to uh, learn about operator overloading. So, um, any questions? One? Yes. Um, it's possible that you're going to have today, but at night, if you have it. But, and it's going to be open for 48 hours. So, No, no, right now, in, the, in this lab? No, 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 no. You don't have a quiz in this lab. Huh? Not in this lab. No, you don't have a quiz in this lab. So, uh, we talked about operators, okay? And we said... Uh, we talked about operators. Am I recording? Yes. We talked about operators, and uh, we mentioned that operators are in two major categories. They're divided in two major categories. Category number one, we call them binary operators. And we said when you have an operator, the operator you have, you can see it over there, yes. So when you have an operator, the operator you create, when it's binary, it receives two what we call operands. The operands that we have, what they do, they act like arguments of a function. So when you have left operand, right operand, left operand and right operand, they act like either arguments of a function or uh, the owner of uh, the operator and uh, uh, what it receives. So the uh, binary operator can be seen in two different ways. It can be treated as if we assume this is a function, okay? If we assume this is a function, so like if, if the function name was foo, over here it's something like this. So the left side and the right side. We're going to see that. But let's first take a look at the, um, first let's take a look at the pause. So going back to what I was talking about, the operators are divided into two separate categories. Uh, either binary, that is separated in two subcategories, or uh, unary. A unary operator usually, 99% of the time, appears like this as prefix. OK? So it's going to be as prefix. And prefix operators come before the operand, OK? Uh, when we are dealing with binary operators, every binary operator receives the two operands in some way. And they return a result, and the result has some kind of a value in it. Whatever the value is, is they're going to return that value. Examples for it is if I have something, let's say I have these two variables, I have integer a, that is 5, and integer b, that is 10, okay? If I say a plus b, plus is an operator, its job is to get the left operand and the right operand, sum up the values and return, therefore the value 15 will be returned. Are we okay with that? This is the first category of binary operators. They don't have any side effects. The two operands at left and right remain what they were after the execution is done. The second one is the one that has side effect. 
which essentially is something like this. A plus equal B. When you have something like this, the job of plus equal is to get the two values to sum it up, set the left one to that value, and then return it. So it not only returns the 15, but after the execution of this, A will become 15. So this one has side effect. Are we okay with this? The top one doesn't have side effect, which means essentially this has constant operands. This one does not have constant operands. The left and right of a binary operator that doesn't change the operands, the operands are constant, they're not going to change. The, the values are only extracted. The one that has side effect will actually change the value at left. Of course, we can change all these and make these operators do whatever we want to do. We can even make it change the right value if we want. Doesn't matter. We can, as for a function, when you already have a function, you overload that function and you give that function a new meaning, you can do that, right? By changing the types of the arguments, you can do that. Okay, you can do the exact same thing to the operators. You can, the operators that they don't exist, you can actually overload the old operators and make them work with new, new operands. For example, in here, if I have, uh, if I have, say, car, car C, and that has a speed of 25 kilometers an hour. Oh, I'm going out. I shouldn't go out of that boundary. So for example, if I have car C that has the speed of 25 kilometers an hour, and I want to increase 10 kilometers an hour to its speed, I may create an operator that says C plus equal 25, uh, sorry, 10. Obviously, plus equal is created for primitive values like doubles and integers and floats and things like that. A car plus equal doesn't mean anything to it. It doesn't accept that argument. We can overload it exactly like a function and make that plus equal mean that I am adding to the speed of a car. I'm just imagining things. Imagination is how you start programming, right? So that's what, we, that's what we're going to do. So, but, so a, a, a class car doesn't know what plus equal is. We're going to make it understand that. But what is important for us to know that uh, a binary operator has two different things. Uh, uh, the ones that is, uh, uh, doesn't have side effect and ones that do have side effect. Can you give me example of who has the you have the microphone? Uh, can you give me an ex another example of a binary operator that doesn't have side effect? It doesn't change its size. Anything? It's the same thing, but you can try uh, use uh, another symbol like minus. Yeah, minus. There you go. So, so if I go minus over here, it's the same thing. Pass the argument. If I want to have another one that has side effect, give me an example. Equal. Equal, equal just equal by itself. So if I say A is equal to B, okay, the equal, the, the setting by itself is an operator. It accepts two arguments. Its job is to get the value of the right side, put it in the left side, and then it returns it. So it's going to return 10, and after this, A will be 10. Correct? Are we okay with this? So any uh, operator that you see, they work that way, and we can actually make them work. So for, <clears throat> uh, for uh, what shall I call it? For uh, unary operators, for unary operators, things like minus b, okay? If I say minus b, the value minus, the 
operator minus, it negates the value of B. Therefore, it returns minus 10 over here. Now, my question is, from the lady with the microphone, does this operator have side effect? Yes. No, because the value of B will not change after. See, sometimes it looks like it does have. Sometimes it looks like it has a side effect. But you have to think, if afterwards you only print B, what the value will be? It's going to be 10. It's not going to be minus 10. I didn't change the B itself. I just returned it. If I said A is set to minus B, nothing happens to B. The value 10 will be, minus 10 will be evaluated over here. Then assignment receives that minus 10, puts it in A, and then it returns it back. So what happens over here if I say C out A, this is going to print 10, this is going to print minus 10. Are we okay? See, I know these are kindergarten stuff that I'm talking about, but we have to first remember, because things that you do with your uh, subconscious, <laughs> like things like the primitive uh, uh, four um, uh, uh, arithmetic operators minus plus, op uh, plus minus uh, multiplication and division, you do it in your mind without even know how they work, right? It's, it's kind of in your, in your DNA now, okay? We need to analyze it so when we want to change it, we understand how we do it. So this is the one that doesn't have side effect. We do have, we do have, in math, we don't have uh, uh, any operators that they have side effect. Only in programming languages we do. So a binary operator that actually, that, uh, a unary operator that actually has side effect looks like something like minus minus B. Now, this, the job of this minus minus is to uh, reduce the value of B, so B will become 9, okay? B will be 9. I better put something like this to understand that these are, uh, so B will have the value of 9 after this, and then afterwards 9 is returned, okay? So this minus minus is a unary operator that changes and modifies the value of the, the thing. If I do plus plus, it's the same thing. So that's a unary operator with side effect. Now, there are only two types of two individual uh, unary operators that are postfix that are only in C language. You know those things. So the postfix ones, the postfix ones are, are uh, a plus plus and B minus minus. So plus plus and minus minus, they can come after. Okay? In their primitive definition, we know that the action happens after, which means first they return the original value, then they, redu they reduce or increase by one. But that's not our concern. All we need to know is that they are postfix and they, uh, have, they have side effect. That's all. Are we okay? So these are the things that we need to remember about operators when we are dealing with them, okay? Uh, and that's it. Uh, any questions about math? Opera, like, uh, it's not math, actually, C, C, C operators. These are literally C operators that we are dealing with. In C++, we want to be able to change the meaning of the operators. C has certain operators that C++ inherits because C++ uh, mother of C++ is C, right? So it inherits all these things. But C++ has polymorphism in it, which means you can make already existing actions mean a different thing. We're going to do that to operators. But first, we need to understand what does it mean a binary operator? What does it mean a unary operator? And all those good stuff. Are we okay? Okay, one. Are we okay, two? All right. So, I'm going to create a new class 
And I'm going to start working with it, and, and you'll see exactly uh, what's going to happen to it. So I'm going to create a new class, add a new unit, actually. And I'm going to call that class a double. I don't like how the double values work in C. In C. OK? Double values, you can put anything in them. I want, a, I want a smart double value, a double value that I can set. What is the uh, like maximum value that I can put in it? What is the minimum value that I can put in it? How can I deal with this? So I, I want to be able to, uh, uh, to do things with my double that the primitive double value cannot do. So if I want to do that, I have to create a class for it to represent a double. So then I click on OK. So the class is created. And I'll do the regular stuff. So I'm going to say, if not defined, SDDS double H. Many of you wrote that thing in lowercase. They wrote SDDS and wrote this lowercase. Don't do that, OK? Please keep everything uppercase. I didn't comment on that, but so define and namespace SDDS. You can leave that pragma wants to be there. Later on, you're going to learn what that pragma does, but uh, just uh, keep it over there. It, it, it's, har it's harmless. OK, and I'm going to come to double.cpp. And in double.cpp, I'm going to simply say namespace SDDS. And we know that every time we want to create anything new, that's how we start. We create an empty, em, empty, empty uh, uh, header file like this. So essentially, this is an empty header file starting to create uh, a double. So if I want to create a double, I want it to handle a double value. So I'm going to call it. I'm going to have a data over here, double, and I'm going to call it the value of this double, right? OK, the very first thing that I'm going to do over here, public, the very first thing I'm going to do is the problem with any variable in C that when you don't define them, they have a random value in them. So I can just fix that in two seconds. So I create a default constructor, double. And I make that default constructor, let's split the window, make that default constructor set the value to 0. Are we OK? Ta-da! Already it's better than the double that we have, OK? Then I want to be able to. Uh, Print the value of the double, OK? I know when we start, it's going to suck, OK? But as we go further and we apply the new knowledge we gain and learn how to use the syntax of operator overloading, you'll see everything is going to become more clear and nice as we go through it, OK? So bear with me, all right? I need my double to be able to print itself. We had a rule and regulation for that, OK? We said anytime you are creating a display, you go std, o stream, reference, uh, print. I'm going to say print and o stream, oh, sorry, std, o stream, reference, uh, osdr, set by default to std, c out. Right? OK. Uh, who has the microphone? You have the microphone? Why am I writing STD scope resolution here? You know the answer. OK, why? Why am I not writing using namespace STD up there instead? Because of? Doesn't matter. The fact that everybody's thinking about it and somebody wants to actually go ahead, tell me. We don't use any namespace in a header file. Remember, by default, it is illegal to say using namespace anything in a header file. You can create a namespace in a header file. You can never use it. 
Why? Hidden logic. If you include it somewhere, people without knowing are going to start using a namespace. And that's not good for them. Don't pass that. You're going <laughs> to, you're still on the hook. Okay. So that's why we did it that way. Okay. So keep that in mind. And we can do the exact same thing with read. It doesn't matter. Let's just do it over here. It's practice. iStream referenced, let's say, read std iStream reference ISTR that is by default set to STD CA. Okay, so these are the two functions that I, that I have created. I can actually create them and so I can actually print and, uh, and it's very simple and straightforward. I simply say return OSTR and M value and it returns the value, right? It shows the value and in the other one I'm going to say uh, return ISDR uh, extracting the value, right? Very simple, reading a double, and right? We do all these things. Obviously, all those reading stuff that we have done in, 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 the, in the other thing, foolproof reading and things like that, we can always add them, a foolproof reading, foolproof writing, things like that, formatting. We can all add this because now I have a double that I can add stuff to its guts. It's not a plain thing. I can actually do things with it, okay? I am, I'm encapsulating a double. But for now, we are just keeping it simple. As we go, we're going to make it more complicated as, as it's going to happen. The next thing I need to do, I need to be able to set a double to something, right? So I can say double... Uh, double value, right? And set the double value to whatever I want. So in here, I'm going to say m value is set to value. Now, having this, obviously, when you think about this, you're going to say, hey, you just wrote something extra that you didn't need to. You could simply have a default value for zero for this and get rid of an extra default constructor, right? We could have done that. Remember that? I can put a default value over here and get rid of that, but let it be. We did it. Let it be like this. So now if I go to my, and the very first thing, like, as you go like this, immediately compile it, see if it's okay. Okay? Why it's not compiling? Control F. Anyways, Am I making a mistake somewhere? Compile, control F7. Okay, I don't know if we're, oh, probably control F7 is doing something somewhere. Anyways, it, it compiled and it's okay. I know that I don't have any syntax or logic, we don't know. Now I'm gonna start my unit test over here immediately. I'm gonna go over here, include uh, uh, double dot H, obviously using namespace SDDS, int main. In here, I'm going to say double D is set to 123.456, right? And I'm going to say D dot print, and it's going to print the double for me, right? And I can go to new line like this, correct? And then go return zero. Obviously, I need to have, because of that end L thingy, I need to have the IO stream included. And using namespace std. Many of you wrote amazing programs. Why did I say value over there? Using, uh, many of you put the custom header file at the top of the library header file. You shouldn't do that. This always should come after. If you have done it, you're going to receive uh, a feedback from me. Anyways, when I run it, you will see that it simply runs it and Builder in two lines. Let's see what do we have. What does it say? Oh, get int must return a value. We didn't finish the get int the other day. Oh, this is the other get int. Oh, this is the utils thingy. With min and max, I just want to see what it is. 
hopefully it's okay. Anyways, control F5. That's the utils thing we have done last time. Anyway, so one, two, three, four, five, and it printed it. Are we okay with this? Simple, right? Nothing fancy about it. Now, I have two doubles. I want to be able to add a value to the double. Okay, starting doing uh, math operations with it. To add a double, all I know is functions, so I'm going to use that. So let's put that I.O. thingy aside, and in here I'm going to say operations. Okay? So in operations, I'm going to add. I want to add a value to, a, to this double. How do I do that? I'll go add, and I'm going to get double reference value. Right? I want to add another double to this double. Correct? And I don't want to change it. Remember, binary operators, we said that it, it shouldn't have a side effect. I want to add a value to it, so I have to make sure it's constant. I don't want to change it. And after I'm done, I'm going to return myself. Double reference at. So this kind of works like plus equal. Like something like plus equal. Essentially adds a double value to value of me. Add to me. Okay? So if I do something like this, if I create this function, the, uh, uh, it's going to be very simple actually to create. It takes two seconds. So to create this function, I receive a, another double. All I need to do is to say m value plus equal, uh, let's call this one, I'm not going to call it, I'm, I'm going to call it, uh, um, RO for some unknown reason. You'll see later on why do I call it RO. Okay, so RO dot M value. So I'm adding the value of the other double to my own value and I then return it. So I'm going to go return uh, this and we all know about that. So I'm returning reference of myself. This add adds one double to the value of its own. So in here, if I have another double, uh, E, and I'm going to put over there a 100, okay, I can simply say D dot, D dot add E, and after that, if I go D dot print, First, I'm going to run it. It adds the value of e to itself. Therefore, it becomes 223. Okay? So let's walk through it just to see what I did. Okay? I'm going to come over here. So first, the constructor is called the value is set. And the constructor of the other one is called value is set to 100. So I have two double classes. One is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The other one is 100. I am printing the first double value, so essentially goes to the print function and prints the value on the O stream that is C out, and it's printed. And then after that, I, I get out, and I'm going to say add the value of E to myself. It passes the reference of, constant reference of E to add. RO is actually E, as you see it has 100 in it. It adds the 100 to the value that is 123 for yada, yada, yada. Then after adding, it returns itself, which is going to cyberspace now. Nobody's catching that. And then after that, D will have the value 223 two, three, instead of 123 and prints the value out and we have it. Are we okay with this? Anything complicated down to here? Okay. So I have D created, I have E created, now I'm going to create an F over here. And F has nothing in it. Now I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to say F is set to D. Okay? When I do something like that, add is returning the reference of D, right? Because it's returning the reference of D, it will be D. It is essentially represents D, becomes an alias for D. Therefore, I have F is set to D. Because the two classes are identical, it's like setting one structure to another. It automatically copies everything from one to another. Therefore, whatever I have in E will go into F. 
So after this, if I print F, the result will be exactly like D. <coughs> Correct? Problems with this? Okay, I want you to seriously think about this. Do you understand exactly what happened to this function now? Are we okay? I created a function that receives the same object and adds the value to itself. What is, what is the type of RO? Type of R, what is, what is type of RO? It's a reference. Reference of what? Reference of what? RO is reference of a? Thank you. So RO is a reference of a double. What does double have? What is, what does double have? as an attribute. So I'm saying get the argument, I called it RO. You want me to call it something else? The value or just the name. I'll, 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 I'll tell you why, why I called that. It's going to make sense soon. But I just, it's just the name. Yeehaw, whatever. You call it whatever you like. Okay? So it's RO's value. It means that argument's value will be added to the value of the current object, which is the owner of add. Are we okay with this? All right? And then we return the whole object so we can grab the object later on. Are we all okay with this? Are we okay with this? Everything's good? You're the person who's going to cause me trouble after. <laughs> Are we all okay with this? Okay. Yes. Mm. No, it, so essentially that F is, means this, as if I did this. If I did this, do you have any problem? If I did this, would it be, is, it, is this okay? That's okay, right? What is D returning? Who is this? So instead of writing it two lines, I wrote it in one line. Right? It doesn't make any difference because add is returning D. So instead of writing D dot add E, I'm saying F is equal D dot X, so, so I don't write the second line. So instead of writing the second line, because C programmers are all lazy, they want to type as less characters as possible. That's why I did that way. Are we okay? Please, let the questions come before I go to the next step. The next step is an extremely important step. And I want you to understand this fully before I go to the next step. Is there anybody who have any hesitation on how this ad thing is working? Sure. <clears throat> so what happens, I want to add a double to another double, like I do it with regular ones. But because I don't have operators, operators don't understand. I, I want to do this. Really, in reality, this is what I want to do. But there is no plus equal that accepts two double classes. It's not defined for it. The C++ compiler doesn't understand that. Therefore, I'm doing the best I can which is creating a function instead that belongs to D because I want to add the value to D. It has side effect, right? So I'm going to say instead of plus equal, I'm going to call it an add, and I'm going to pass E to it. Therefore, the E that has 100 to it will go to add. Now D has the value of E. It can add that value to itself and return itself out so it can be put somewhere else if needed. That's all. Are we okay? Yes. What is F what?
because it's an object, it's not an alias. F is a variable of type double. F is an object of type double. As E is an object of type double, as D is an object of, like, uh, of type double. Picture in your mind, I'm writing regular double, and I just want to do operations between them. I want to simulate that. That's all. Am I making sense? Am I? You're OK? All right. Are we all OK now? Now, this place, I want you to pay attention. I want to change this add to hoo hoo. And I'm going to change this to hoo hoo. And I'm going to change this to hoo hoo. Do you think anything changes? If I run this program, it still works. But instead of add, I'm saying hoo hoo. Oh, why is it? I think the compiler said, why are you calling me hoo hoo? It's silly. Let me see what's going on. Oh, because of this plus equal, silly plus equal that I put over here. Right? If I call it hoo hoo, it still works, right? Does anybody, everybody okay with me when I change the name of the ad to hoo hoo? Are we all okay with that? It all worked, right? So I'm going to change it to something else now. I'm going to change it to this. I'm going to change it to operator plus equal. I'm going to call this one operator plus equal. And I'm going to go into the program over here, call this operator plus equal. I just changed the name. Right? And I run it, it's the exact same thing. Ta-da! Are we okay with this? Everybody's okay with this? So now if I run it, I know the name of the function is operator plus equal. So when it comes over here, it, when it reaches over here, it calls the operator plus equal, obviously. It goes over there, adds the values, returns this, and then the this is return. F is set with that one. It prints this and that, right? Are we okay with this? Right? Now take a look at this. The ingenious of this operator plus equal is that it can be called in two different ways. It's function format or it's operator format. Ta-da! You can call it in two different ways because it's an operator. You can use its function name that you just created. It's a regular function. No magic. Or you can use its operator shape. As long as you remember that the first choice that you have, you have to remember these things can get overloaded. So they can have five different signatures. But the very first signature that you should come to your brain when you look at an operator is that the operator belongs to the left one and receives the right one. That's why I call this RO, right operand. OK? So this RO is actually right operand. That, that's why I call it that way. So it's right operand. And in here, I'm going to add a comment, say, this is left operand. Why? Because it has side effect, and I want to change the value. So this is left operand, that is right operand, and it runs the exact same way. If I run the program, if I run the program, as you see, it comes right down to this place, and it jumps to the operator plus and does exactly what it does. And this plus equal returns the reference of its owner, that is D, and therefore that is returned, and F becomes whatever it is. Are we good? Yes. And uh, <clears throat> you see how I'm shouting over here like an opera singer? I want you to do the same thing. Loud. Go ahead. But it doesn't accept two double classes. That's why we are overloading it. What is the meaning of overload? Let's please, the, the, 
The key is in the details. When you say, I am overloading a function, what does it mean? It means the function already exists. I am using the same name with different arguments, correct? Plus equal exists for doubles, for integers, for characters, for all these things, but it doesn't exist for my double class. Therefore, it's called an operator overload. I am changing its meaning. I am giving it new arguments. Does that make sense? Does it make sense? All right. So now that I have done this, let's continue. Let's keep going. Yes, go ahead. That's, that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> Give me two seconds. So let's say, so this actually changed the value of D, correct? OK, so I'm, I'm going to, because I don't want it to be 50 different things, for every single one, I'm going to have a separate main. So I'm going to save this main and go to the next operator. So in here, I'm going to call this over here. I'm going to call it A operator. Uh, plus equal. I don't think it's going to accept that equal. Operator plus equal <laughs> dot CPP. Okay, so uh, tester. Okay, and I save it like that. Then I'm going to open my PRG and go for the other one. So now, now I want this to happen. So essentially, what I want is this. I want the sum of D and E. But the difference is that the sum does not change D, correct? That's the only difference. So let's, let's write the sum function. So in here, I'm going to write the sum function. So let's come over here. As it says over here, so sum definitely returns a double. OK? It cannot be a reference, because if it returns the reference of D, D is unchanged. So it's stupid to change something that is not the result. I need the sum of the two. The sum of the two is a completely different double with a different value. It cannot be the reference of D. Therefore, what I need to pass over here is just a double, not a reference. So I'll call it sum. And at right side, I receive a constant double reference. No, I can actually call it right operand. OK? Now, I need to make the sum guarantee that it's not going to change this object, because this object is the left operand, correct? How do I do that? We put a const after the thing. And then let's write this function. So as you see, it is actually giving me <laughs> that you're supposed to return an object of double. I can write it in a very simple way or kindergarten way. So first, I'm going to write the kindergarten way. So the kindergarten way is to, when I'm returning something, I always create it and then I return it. So I'm going to say double result, correct? So this result must have the value of m value plus the right operator right hand operands dot m value correct and then i return it right now if i run the beautiful program of mine over here we will see that it will run the hell oh stop let's actually go through it So it is one, two, three, four, five, and let's print everything over here. E dot print, and in here I'm gonna say uh, C out E. So we can actually see the value of E being passed. C out D, and C out F. So we can actually see what we are printing, right? Because print receives an O stream, correct? So I can just put the C out in there. So <clears throat> what happens is this. It runs over here, sets all these things. That's printed. I don't care. It comes, actually, I do care. When you are writing a unit test, 
you must show the values before and after, right? So I'm going to actually do it like this. Remove that from here. Put it at left. Put this one at right. And then start. So the program runs. And as you see, E, F, and they all have the values. E is 100. D is 123. And F is 0. We're all good with that, right? <clears throat> then it comes down to uh, f is equal to d dot sum e. So it's going to give me the sum of d and e. It goes up here. Res is a completely new object that is created using the m value and the m value of the other one, which is essentially 2, 3, the sum of the two. Therefore, this res will have the value 2, 3, 4, 5, as you see, right? It returns that by value and puts that one in F. And when it runs now, you will see that F has the value of 2. And the two operands, left and right, remain exactly what they were before. Are we okay with this? Now, all we need to do is to do the magic of renaming, which is essentially I need to go over here, rename this to operate. That's a little too big. Operator plus, and then go over here, call this operator plus, plus, and <clears throat> in here, comment this, and uncomment the other one. And then it's going to give me an error. What the heck? Did I? Stupid compiler, operator. <laughs> That's what we do all the time, right? <laughs> it's compiler's fault. <clears throat> so now it's printing all those, and when it comes to plus, it goes and runs the operator plus, and everything is done perfectly. Are we okay? That's kindergarten version. If they see this code, they know that you just started programming because. Um, it's always easier not to name anything when, they, when you can have a temporary one created. So instead of this, these two, why do I give something a name when I, when I don't need to? Why don't I? What, remember, we said never call a constructor unless you know what you're doing. We said when you call a constructor, what do you do, actually? Do you remember? Yes. No, no. When you actually call a constructor, what happens? Yeah. When you call a constructor, there is no function call. What happens? No. It, calling a constructor will give it to the lady. Call it. You know. When we call a constructor, it's as if you forgot something. You initialize what? No. 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 Yeah, but a member of variables of who? Which object? But you, you, you're, you're calling a constructor. There is no name for the object. It's a nameless object. Thank you. So instead of, because in here, why do I create a local variable and kill it right away when I just cr can create a nameless one and send it? So here, if I actually do this, Because now I'm a pro, I know when I call a constructor, no function is called. A temporary nameless double is created here and is returned. So no creation or deletion. Ta-da. Crazy, right? Yeah, you do it always. You are supposed to do this. If you understand it, do that. If you don't, the way I see you are going like, 
Okay. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> yes. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. <clears throat> when you, not when you create, when you call a constructor. When you call a constructor, nothing is called. An object will get created. Because the job of constructor is to construct. When you think you are calling a constructor, you are asking the compiler to create an object for you. The compiler will not call anything, it will create an object. Because you didn't put any name for it, it becomes a temporary object. It gets created and dies immediately after. Everything is done. It's a real object. The only thing, it doesn't have a name. It is so sad. It's a very sad thing to say in C++ and computer science. Compiler thinks anything that doesn't, need, doesn't have a name should get... Which means if you, in real life, <clears throat> this is what you're doing, right? So that equal that I have written is this, correct? So you are creating a double called res, correct? Remove the res, and what do you have? Still you are creating an object that doesn't have a name, correct? So it will die at line 15.5. Compiler kills anything that doesn't have a name, because it says it doesn't have a name, nobody can access it, why do I even keep it? Calling a constructor is not calling a function, it's creating a temporary nameless object. That's why I said create a temporary nameless object and return it. So it simply gets that and returns that, put it on F and it dies. Mission accomplished. It does what it's supposed to do. It sets the F and then it dies. Yes? What? Just to, well, I'm just being um, truthful to you. Whoa, what did I do? When you do this, the compilers are smart enough saying, this person is a rookie, let's not even create that. I'm not going to even call it res or anything. I'm just going to do exactly as I told you. <laughs> yes, that's why when you are walking through, you'll see first it jumps to return, then goes back to double. Walk through it. All these things, you see it goes first to return, then comes back to the thing, because it optimizes your code better than you have written it. Yes? Give me a second. When you are returning this, what? Oh, let me show you both source code first. These are important conversation, people. Don't think that we are wasting time. We really, really need to know this. <clears throat> this plus equal calls line number nine, correct? What is it returning? What is this? Who is this in this line of code? Who is this in this line of code, line 12? It's D. D is this. So you are returning D. Why? Because D has the value you want in it. It's the sum of E and D, right? You added something to it. So you can just return D, correct? That's why you are returning the reference of this. It means return D, correct? Now let's come over here. Who has the answer in here? Res. If I return reference, I am returning the name of something that is about to die. Does it make sense? Res, this doesn't have the answer for me. Object res has an answer for me. How can I return the alias of something that is supposed to die? This is the scope for it. 
Rest dies at line 17. Why do I return a reference of a dying thing? It doesn't make sense. It's like I'm saying, you want a coffee? As you want to get it, I'm just going <laughs> to... That doesn't make sense, right? Right? I have to pass its value because it's about to die. When we come to classes with resources, you'll understand this perfectly. No, it's not the. No, just do do basic math. A plus B. In this in this equation. In this equation. Does it return D? It returns the sum of D and E. That is a new object that overrides us. Are we okay? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because it's not D, we don't return. Yeah. So, mm. yeah, so what happens over here, <coughs> oh, you're talking about putting a double in here? Please don't. Okay, don't think about it. It's not important. Okay. Don't focus on that. Our focus is operator overloading today. Although these quests, these are important stuff. But let's do that too. <clears throat> so now I learned how to do, how to do, uh, sorry, this one. Um, binary operator with side effect and binary operator with no side effect. Okay? So from now on, when you look at an operator, Always you look at uh, an operator like this. So if I told you, <coughs> if I told you, uh, so let's remove this one. And I'm going <coughs> to, so it's B, it's operator plus dot CPP. So whenever we are looking at an operator, like if this operator doesn't exist, so if I, let's put it this way. Let's say I want to write this operator now. I want to write this. Please take a look. I want to write F is set to D divided by E. I want to do this. Okay? How do I write this? How I go about writing this? It's very simple. As soon as you see something like this, Change it to this, right? F is set to D dot slash E. See if you can write this. And this slash is the name of your function. Operator division. Immediately do that. So immediately change it to its function type. Operator division. And then take about, think about it. When division happens, does D and E change? No. So it's a constant. Okay? What else? Uh, the result definitely is not D when I'm returning because it's a new value that's going to go into F, right? So to create that, it's two seconds. You simply go to your header file and you write exactly what you wrote over there. You say it's a double. <clears throat> it's not going to be a reference because the result is not in the left, the left one and it's operator division. And at right side, I shouldn't change it. It's a double. <coughs> Seriously? Double reference. Uh, I'm going to call it right hopper. I'm not going to go thing. And const because I don't want to change it. And then you uh, implement it exactly how you want it. So you're going to go over here and say, I, um, I, I want to have a, a double result. And the result of what I have would be uh, m value divided by right hand operators m value. And then you return that result. And you're done. You create it. Right? <clears throat> so it's, it's as easy as that. So anything you look at, anything you look at, immediately change it to its operator. You don't even need to do this. And compile and run that. See if it works. It doesn't matter. These two are exact same calls. No difference. Okay? 
So, so if I run this now, you will see that I will get the exact same thing. Now, I'm going to give you the challenging one now. <clears throat> okay? So as you see, oh, what happened? Oh, shoot, again, I changed the wrong file. Uh, copy. Sorry, I changed the wrong file. Let me just... <clears throat> okay, one more time. So... Oh, shoot. I didn't... Yeah, I know. Uh, seriously, and I'm losing my voice for some reason. I owe stream. <clears throat> oh, double. And STDS, darn it. Uh, include, what happened to all those? I thought I copied everything. Include uh, double dot H and using namespace. STDS, I think it's going to compile and run now. <clears throat> so now the division is happening, as you see. Divided by 100 is 1.234. Are we okay with this? Now, this is the tough part, okay? So this one is going to be C operator, operator, division dot CPP. And this time I'm going to open the PRG, not to make the same boo-boo again. Now, what if I have something like this? Take a look, please. I have a plus. I have a plus. Okay? <clears throat> plus is at right hand side of a primitive value. Can a primitive value have a method? It can't, right? So I cannot make this a member function. This is the, one of the two cases that you're allowed to create standalone operator overload functions. We call this helper functions. When, <clears throat> I, if I want this to happen, if I want to be able to get the value of the two and return whatever I want to return, if I want to do that, then I need to actually uh, set all these things to happen. So in here, it's going to be a little complicated. So <clears throat> I have the right one as that one and left one as this one, correct? So I cannot have... this because integer is not a thing that I can put values for it, right? So what do I do? I'll compromise. I'll say I'm going to do this. I create a standalone operator. Let's first uh, fix the top one. <clears throat> I create a standalone operator plus that receives a double at left and a double object at right. Okay, so it becomes a regular function. This is not a member function anymore. So I have to actually get into double, not in the class, outside of the class, create an operator plus that accepts two arguments, regular double as left operand and a double object reference because it's an object, I pass it at reference and I make it const because it's not supposed to change, that's right operand. Now I can decide what I want to return. 
by definition, when you are having two values that are not the same type and you do, you do uh, arithmetic operations, always the big one is returned, right? So if you have an integer and a float, the result is float. If you have integer and double, the result is double. I am having a double and a double object. So I'm going to make the result to be a double object. <clears throat> and because this double object is nowhere to be found, it's a new thing, I have to make it by, uh, I have to make it uh, by, uh, uh, by uh, value, not reference. So then I create this. So it's going to go at right. Oops, home, home, home. So this becomes a helper function. In the text, they call it helper functions, helper operator overload. Operator overloads are nothing but functions. So I'm, I don't distinguish between the two. A helper function is a function that accepts something like that. And a helper operator is a helper. They're the same thing. Like, don't, don't think of operators. Don't think of operators as something special. They're just functions. Like a regular function, they can be member of a class or not member of a class. Like a regular function, you always prefer them to be a member unless you have to not make it a member. The only difference is that an operator can be called in two different ways, using its function name or using its operator name. Right? So it's no difference. <clears throat> so to create this, I am going to go here and I'm going to create the definition for it. So as you see in here, I'm going to create a double result and I'm going to say it's the left operand plus the right operand's value. Eh, I can't do that. Darn it. What do I do? It is not a member. I can't change it. Darn it. What do I do? I'll do your things and I'm going to tell you a story and then we'll continue, okay? So because I cannot access the value, what I can do, I cannot access the value of the thing. It's a private thing, right? When you look at the double M value is private. I can actually bring this thing in and say, hey, this is a friend. By making this a friend, I am giving this access to all the property of double with no restriction. It's like you give, you go for a trip and you give the key to your best friend. Please water my plants. Right? You come back from a trip, you see your grandmother's golden necklace is missing. Your friend becomes your enemy. In object orientation, friends are only good for one thing. Knife in a back. You will never, ever use friend unless ownership is applied. Any of you have, have a dog? I have a dog. I love her. She, her name is Coco. And I said, small poodle. I love that dog. Okay? You call that dog your friend, right? They're not your friend. You can take him to the vet and put them down. You own them. You're not your pet's friend. You're its owner. You're calling yourself a friend to be kind. Right? Right? That's what it is. Friendship in object orientation should implement ownership, which we don't know how yet. It's as if you are creating an array. An array has elements, right? So you want to create, create a class called array, and you create a class called element. An element should not exist without an array. It doesn't make sense. So by definition, an array must own elements and create elements and destroy elements because it's part of its being. That's when an array becomes a friend of element. We don't have 
such a thing. You do that unless we ask you so you can practice syntax, you're a bad person. Don't do it. You do something like that, you can always create an accessor for your function, for your class, to give limited access to your class instead of opening the door, giving the key to the, to the function to go do everything. Instead of that awful thing that I have just done, what I can do is this. I can create a method, a query, and I write it like this, double value, const. It just gives the value out and doesn't allow you to change anything. I'll go over here, I'll set it up, <clears throat> and I simply return m value. Right? So now you can safely write your, your function in a civilized way, which is dot value. Done. No friendship needed, everything is good. Okay? Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Everybody's okay with this? All right. So doing that, now I can actually, as you see, call that function. Now that function exists. It's an operator plus that receives 2, 3, 4, 5 at left and E at right. And when I run it, it obviously runs in and adds that one to the value. Oh, what happened? What did I do? Did I do something wrong? Huh. It made F0, did it? <clears throat> okay. A bug in a three-line program. Oh, I forgot to return res. See, it's calling the constructor. It's not giving you any error message. It creates a temporary nameless double with zero in it and returns that out instead. So I was a bad boy. Yeah, it's a <laughs> I said I was a bad boy. She says, mm-hmm. <laughs> I was a bad boy. Okay, so now it's better, right? So obviously I don't like to call the operator like that. I'm going to call it like this to make it look more beautiful. Now I can have a left side operator that does that. So that's number one. When you have an operator, then you make it a member. You cannot make it a member. You make it a friend. The second scenario is that you don't have access to the source code of the the class. Let's say, so this one, is CD, I'm going to say uh, helper operator plus dot CPP. Okay, now let's do this one. You can ask 10,000 questions. Go ahead, what's up? It's a double. <laughs> there is no class. There is no member. Nothing. Right? It's a double. You can't do that. And I'm going to give you another example. Look at this. Oh, come on. I want to do that. Why do I call e.print? I want to print my double like a regular double with C out. How do I do that? Immediately you have to think, okay, I'm going to try and make the member function as usual. So this one's going to be, I'm just going to copy it so we'll see. So this one's going to be dot, oper uh, dot operator left shift and receives that one. You already did that with print, right? So why can't you do it with C out? The, the answer is that C out is in the library. You don't have access to its header file, to its source code. You cannot go change C++ compiler to do what you want. C out is out of reach. Because of that fact, I'm going to change the operator to a helper. Instead of creating this, which is impossible, I don't have access to, I, to O stream source code. 
because I don't have access to all stream source code, I'm going to change it. And it's very easy, actually. Instead of ha having that, I'll use the other one, the helper version, which is essentially operator left shift. And then in here, at left side, is going to be C out. And at right side, it's going to be E. And it's going to go in L. So, so my function, this is the signature of my function, needs to receive a C out at left and E to print. Obviously, it has to be constant because I don't want to change it. And it should return the C out so and L can get printed. So immediately do that. And this is a helper function, a genuine, nice member function. So I'm going to go in here and do exactly that. It is supposed to return O stream. So STD, O stream, reference. The name is operator left shift or insertion. At right side, it receives an O stream reference OSTR. And at left, at, at left side, receives the OSTR. Uh, so I'm going to call it left operand. And at right side, it is going to receive, oh, O stream is STD O stream. And at right side, it's going to receive a constant double reference, well, right operand. Let's bring it down so it becomes. So as you see, at left side, it receives O stream. At right side, it receives a constant double to do whatever it needs to do and returns an O stream. And remember what I told you, how to create, create your prints to receive an O stream and return an O stream? Remember that? That was the reason. Now, when you're overloading this, it's essentially standard. You should need, you need to do this with your eyes closed with everything. As soon as somebody tells you, I want the object to get printed with C out, immediately, eyes closed, you return O stream reference, you receive O stream reference at left, constant object right hand, reference right hand, and immediately go in here and you simply return the right hand operators print. Where's my print? Didn't I do my print constant? I'm a bad person. Print is supposed to be constant. Remember that? Always apply the, the, the logic. And I didn't do it myself. I'm such a bad person. And then we come over here. Oh, not there. We'll come over here. And I'm going to say print. And I'm going to pass the left operand to it. And done. So. Anytime I want my object to get printed, I pass the C out to the operator, insertion operator overload, pass the E to it, and call E's print in there. So the print that I use to do in main, I'll make my function do it so nobody can see it. It's still the print that is happening. So if I want to do something, I'll go do it in my print. Anything do on my print, it's going to happen when C out happens. So when it comes in here, it goes to C out. As soon as it goes over there, goes to the operator overload. As you see, left hand is C out. Right hand is, uh, right hand is the one with 100. And it's going to return the print of 100 to C out. And then the value C out is returned. And that return goes over here, printing the end L which goes to new line. So now it's only 100, but as soon as this is executed, you will see that 100 is called. And this is the function call version of it. It, it looks stupid, I know. It really looks stupid, but that's what we implemented. You can either use the function or you can use the operator. They are the same. If I run that one, it's going to exactly do the same thing <clears throat> as the other one, right? And what the beautiful thing about it is that doing such a thing, you can actually use it exactly like, whoa, exactly like regular things that you're using C out and do cascading in it, which means you can actually write over here the, 
the double value is and I printed it with my operator yada yada and then you go to new line so <clears throat> As you see, the cascading happens exactly how it's supposed to. And when you run it, you get an error because you forgot to put this one over here. <laughs> one more time. There we go. Are we good? All right. <clears throat> now, if you want to implement the, for example, unary operators, that's very simple too. So. So this one is going to be, uh, again, helper. So I'm going to say E helper ostring.cpp. Actually, <clears throat> for example, see, I'm going to do very quickly, I'm going to do that read thingy. OK? Very quickly, I'm going to do the read thingy. So for read, again, if somebody tells you, I want this thing to be able to be read with C in. With your eyes closed, you have to go std. I stream reference operator extraction this time, not insertion. At let side, you receive an I stream reference, ISTR. And at right side, you don't receive a constant one because you want to change it. You want to put value in it. So you go double reference right operand. You create the function. And in the function, all you need to do is return write operands dot read that ISTR is passed to it. See? You should memorize this. This is standard. Now I can actually do it like this. And I can now say enter, enter a double value. And now I can go C in E. And I say, you entered C out. You entered. Ah, come on. You entered E. And you run it. It works exactly like a regular double. Oh. I keep changing the old file. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Copy. I have to. I forget. I get excited and I forget to put the thing. <laughs> Where is it this time? I want to make sure I'm not going to do anything wrong. Resave. Get out. Yeah, so if I run it now, it works exactly like CN. So in here, I'll put, uh, I don't know, 1234.567, and that's what is entered. OK? Unary operators. What if I want to have something like this? F is set to minus E. Again, unary operators are always members unless you can't. It's highly impossible that you can't. So always do your unaries as member. So this essentially translation of that one is F is equal to operator min E dot, sorry, E dot operator minus. And doesn't receive any argument because the object itself is the argument. Okay, simple as that. It's unary, so do it exactly that way. So, so when you're coming over here, I sorry I didn't give you a break, but uh, I want to go over everything so you are you're you're completely done. So in here, I need to return. Obviously, e doesn't have a side effect, so e doesn't change. So the value is a new value, therefore no reference. Okay. The value is a new value, no reference. In here, I'm going to say double operator minus, and you make it actually a const because you don't want to change. And you implement it. In here, please let me do this. Minus uh, m value. <laughs> OK, I don't want to write for two hours. It's just like that. Is that OK? Yes. Of 
course it matters. You cannot change the way operators work. You are overloading an already existing operator. It must be called identical to what it had before. You can't create a new operator. There is no E minus after. There is an E minus minus. You can overload that. You cannot invent a new thing. I cannot create an operator called at sign. Because at sign is not an operator. It is a unary. A unary operator by default is the, is the member. <clears throat> it's unary. There is no other operand. There is only one and that's the owner. Done. And how it's called? It's before. So if you want to call it using a function, you put the function after. But the call of the operator comes after. Unary operators by default come before the operand. <clears throat> okay? Operand is the owner and it comes before. So. <clears throat> So now, if I actually look at this, now I have the F created. I can go see out F. And obviously, what it's going to do, it's going <clears> to <throat> print that one. Anyways, minus 123 is what's going to print, OK? So that's that. Well, that's unary operators. We have a few more. This thing, uh, like, it, you can overload so many different things. That, okay? Uh, <clears throat> but I want to show you something. Okay? Something very important. Remember that output thing. So I'm just going to close these. So this one is, uh, what it is? Uh, EF, I'm going to call it unary operator. I'm sorry you're all tired and leaving, I know, but um, <clears throat> you can watch the recording after. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, remember this. Actually, they are leaving at such an important moment of our lives. <laughs> remember the output I created for you and its main? Remember that output I created? I said, I want to create, because I wanted to show you what this is, I created an output. Output had series of prints that printed different things. And, and this is output.cpp. And the main for it was remember this? I created output f out and I said each one prints this, returns this, therefore you can cascade it. You look like you don't, rem you, don't rem you don't remember it. So I created a class called output that only had three functions called print. Printing an integer, printing. I said I want to create an output class, yes. Is this Wait, different? deep breath, it's going to be operator overload. But first I want you to remember what output was. So output is just printing, right? Prints integer value, prints value, prints constant string, correct? And what I said, I, I said I'm going to use this. In, and let's say we don't have C out. If we don't have C out, this would be my output. And to use it, I have to say, I have to instantiate it and say f out dot print, welcome to yada yada. This calls the print with constant, then calls the print with integer, and it keeps going like that, right? So, so um, welcome to OP2444, yada, 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 yada. And I'm going to say print. I hope you all get print 99.99% percent print in the subject. I just added that double thingy because we had a double two, right? And if I run the program, the program runs, and you're going to say, welcome to yada, yada, yada. Oh, it's not September. It's what? It's, uh, it's, uh, 
it's, uh, it's zero 09 October 5th. So that's 9 October, October 5th. Okay, remember this? Okay? Anybody have any problem with this? You're okay with this? This is how C out is written. Look at this. Instead of print, I'll go operator. Operator? They're right, right? It's not bad spelling, is it? Operator, it's correct. Why one of them is blue, the other one are not? I don't know. Anyways, so I'll do it like this, copy. All right, then I'm going to go to yes. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you. Okay, so now I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to go to here and replace that. So I just changed the name of the function, right? Which means in here, I can call it like this, 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 this. Of course not. OK, and I run it. It runs the same way, right? And I can just call it using the operator way. So go f out. And as you see, it looks exactly like C out, correct? So C out is actually written like this, ladies and gentlemen. That's how C out is written. There is this class whose job is only to print, and it has lots of overloads with the left shift operator, which prints everything. Oh my god, I taught so many things. <coughs> with so many things, and, and, and that's, how, that's how it happens. And it's so simple and straightforward. And when you run it, it works exactly the same way as C out with absolutely no difference. So it's going to go like this. And and the exact same thing is done with C in. So when I run this, it works the exact same way. Right? Why? Because the first F out calls the operator, returning f out, returning f out. And the next one is printed, returning f out. And it keeps going like that. All right? So what? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it means something. No. What the devil? It, it, it means something. I don't know. It means something. Percentage means something. I don't know. I have to take a look. Probably it's kind of escape sequence, like backslash. But anyways, thank you. Yeah, so that's that. So that's how C out is written. It's just operator overload. Now you will see that later on we can actually do casting up overload, um, index overload, and we're going to, uh, one by one, we're going to go through it. Read the operator overload section, and you will see all the things that you need to know about it. And when the time comes, I'm just going to start giving you many examples and going through them so you can learn them easily. With this, sky is the limit. You can literally make the language, create any classes you want, and make your classes behave in your language exactly like everything else in C++. So you don't have to go with silly methods and things like that. Okay? And that was operator overloading. <clears throat> I know I didn't cover everything, but believe me, I, uh, um, I think I pushed enough. Give me a second. Let me breathe. <laughs> She's going to, give me a second. Let me just let me, uh, save this everything and, and, and make it ready. I'll be with you. <laughs>